Um, right, next on the show uh, to talk to us, amongst other things, about AI conferencing tech, we have Craig Durr, Research Director at the Futurum Group, and Dave Michaels, Principal Analyst and Founder of Talking Points. Craig, Dave, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good. I mean, how are you? You've, you've been walking the show floor. You've been experiencing ISE. Uh, I, I can say I'm really happy to be here because you have chairs. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's one of the most precious commodities, yeah. ISE, right? Yeah. Isn't it? They are quite comfortable. They are, I tell you. <laughs> Great. Wonderful. Well, thank you both again for joining the show. I know, Craig, we've been talking because I think we're doing some things for yeah. info. A little preview show, coming up, maybe. Put a little teaser out there, so check <laughs> that out. Um, but yeah, since you've been to the show, you know, You've been seeing a lot of exciting things uh, in terms of technology, but right. what is on top of mind uh, for you in the areas that are most excite exciting at the moment within the industry? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good question. So working with a lot of these vendors, and I've been focusing a lot on Hall 2, which is the uh, Unified Communications and Collaboration Hall, mm -hmm. is um, they're dealing with spaces. Although we're putting technology and devices, in, in back in the US, we're seeing some issues around real estate, leases, questions and concerns about are people returning back to the office and what have you. And the way that we're kind of approaching it, working with them is, you're right, there is this flux. It's going to be, some people are expanding, some are uh, lessening their footprint. But there's this idea of what I'm calling technology density is still going to be present. So technology helps with that business continuity story. These businesses need, still need to do this. So things like workplace experience platforms that help people check in, reservations, uh, video conferencing enable rooms, high-end or appropriate audio for the spaces as well too. So it's a tough story because there's a lot of concerns in market about where I'm going to go to the office, but technology has the opportunity to be the bridge to help alleviate some of those problems. Yeah. Absolutely, there. It, it's a, uh, the offices are getting smaller, but they're getting larger um, shared multi-purpose spaces. And that's a real challenge for a lot of organizations that don't know how to, uh, don't know how to manage that. Uh, we've always had dedicated spaces, so didn't worry about reserving a desk before you got there, you just went in and used it. So it's interesting to see a lot of uh, new use cases around managing this space so much more efficiently. Uh, uh, it's funny because the uh, telephony term from a long time ago, from the PBX era, was called hot desking, and it would allow you to turn a shared phone into your private phone, and now that term is being re reclaimed, reused. It's more about the space than it is about the phone. Uh, to reserve and, and manage that space uh, for all kinds of different uses. Yeah, and and I mean, just to sort of go back to basics, could you tell us a little about a little bit about what each of you do and how it relates to conferencing and uh, AI and conferencing tech? So our my, our own personal use in space. You know, maybe we didn't set it up well enough. Uh, we happen to both work as analysts within this industry, right? Yeah. So research and uh, trying to understand in data. I tell my kids, I help. I work like at a detective, helping businesses trying to figure out what's going out in the marketplace, and we try and do it from a data-driven point of view as well. And uh, you know, we look at it critically. Sometimes myself and I, I think David also, we have to share some hard messages back. It's a tough market around real estate. It's it's a challenging market taking place in these devices or. Or, or this technology, but we also can help map a path forward. Mm -hmm. So I think the information we collect helps both the people, for example, who are vendors here displaying, and those IT decision makers and those IT practitioners, practitioners who are trying to install and, and, and deploy these applications. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dave. So, so for years, the, the technology wasn't AI. It was like, wow, we could do a video call on a web browser. That was a breakthrough moment. You know, but now it's really all about AI. It's the, AI is improving the audio, AI is improving the, uh, uh, you know, we can tra uh, translate, we can transcribe. Uh, the big theme here, I would say, is the multi-camera setups, <laughs> uh, which is uh, magical in so many ways. I, when, I, when I got into conferencing, we had a, a remote control that was the size of a keyboard, nobody could figure it out, and you were expected to either manage your own cameras or managing the far end. No one could do this, it was just a dreadful experience. Now it's really becoming uh, completely automated. Yeah, and speaking of sort of being automated, you know, AI is is playing a big part in that kind of thing. I think at the you know, in terms of uh, how how much that's kind of on, on people's on people's lips at the moment, it's it's a, it's a phrase that's everywhere. How do you see it sort of changing? I mean, it's not it's not absolutely everywhere in terms of the technology because I mean, there's still a little bit of trepidation about how to incorporate it. I mean, uh, you know, a few years ago people were even you know terrified of AI because they thought it was going to steal all the jobs and you know all that kind of stuff. Yeah. 
how do you see it at the moment and what do you see it looking like in a, in a couple of years time in terms of the comfort that people will feel with talking about AI and kind of incorporating it in their, their everyday work. You know, this is an interesting approach to AI, and I'm going to make a comparison to a show back in the US, the CES that just took place a, a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. And AI wound up being headlines everywhere. If, if somebody didn't have on their backboard something about AI, it was very important. But that was a lot about the generative AI experience that you saw taking place. Um, I think AI is present here, but you don't see it like that, but it's present in terms of the experiential part of this. So again, in the, in the uh, Hall 2, where the conferencing information is, we're talking about AI being incorporated into audio, better audio. AI being incorporated into video, better yeah. video experience, like the multi-cameras that we're talking about. AI being incorporated into analytics, taking data and making sense of it easier. Yeah. So I think it's available there, and it's, it's more experiential for those end users in the room, mm -hmm. and practical for the IT administrator in the back office trying to, to make sense of it. Yeah, so uh, the, the best AI in our space is invisible. Uh, you're yeah. not managing it, you're not <laughs> touching it, but you can now hear people because the background noise is, is disappeared. Uh, you, can, you can get a copy of the transcript. Uh, the, the, switch, the camera switching, again, it was very intimidating before, that big remote. Now it's just invisible. The camera just switches uh, and, and to the right person, to the right angle. Yeah. Uh, it's actually really sophisticated what's happening. They have to make sure they don't have, uh, multiple views of the same person. So they've got to recognize you know, who's speaking, who's talking, and if they're already on one camera, they'll use another camera for somebody else. It's, it's really impressive, there, but it's invisible. That's there, the, there's yeah. some great uh, demos going on over there. Yeah. I mean, between some of the companies here, it is fantastic what they're doing. Yeah, well I need to uh, yeah, use my free time tomorrow to, uh, <laughs> yeah, to Yeah, exactly. There's yeah. some wonderful ones, you got to see them. Yeah. yeah, I'd love to. So I'm interested, so thank you for sharing something like those examples of AI. Um, and how it's being incorporated into those conference rooms. But can you go over what are some of the challenges with using AI that we still need to overcome in those conference spaces? Well, this market is hyper aware and a great market around things like privacy and, um, and bringing that element into taking place here for, uh, is, is an important element. So um, concerns, for example. Um, in these meeting experiences, we have Zoom, we have WebEx, we have Microsoft over here displaying. The idea that information is being collected or um, I'm being identified in a meeting could be a concern. But they're all putting in some really nice uh, safeguards around that, individual opportunities to opt in and opt out. So there might be an IT administrator level decision to say I want to turn on meeting summary or ID. Um, ID is the process where it might be able to, you enroll to say based upon Sam's voice, that's Sam speaking, so I see Sam in the transcript. Although we're all in one single camera, it can break it out and understand that. Yeah. But for privacy reasons, you may choose to break it out. So it, it is still top of mind concern. We're yep. early on that curve to try and figure it out. Mm -hmm. But I think, um, you know, kudos to, to EMEA for, for making these manufacturers, you know, toe the line and, and think through what, what they're doing here. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. No, well, same points. Yeah, so um, we're almost out of time. We, uh, you know, time flies, as I keep saying, time flies when you're having fun, but I really do love doing these interview sessions, so thank you so much for doing it. I gather you're involved with a couple of panels uh, while you're here, so you just want to give a, a, a quick plug. I those. am. Infocom, back in June, there's actually yeah. two ideas which actually play to the conversations we're just talking about. Yeah. The first one is we're going to dive deep on understanding and leveraging AI in that meeting experience. So you can think about, again, AI in voice, AI in video, mm -hmm. AI for data. Even when you start getting to the interactions taking place in the room, talking to the room, having it respond back to you, things like that. Yeah. The other session plays a little bit more into implementation. Uh, David mentioned multi-cameras, which is really important for these flex spaces that are becoming popular. So we're going to have a couple of uh, manufacturers, a couple of vendors on stage helping us understand when uh, maybe a front and center camera, multi-camera yeah. experience winds up being good, versus cameras around the room. Yeah. And uh, here's a uh, spoiler alert, it depends on the situation. Yeah. And, and we're going to help create a framework for people to understand what's right for me, which I think is going to be really good for uh, CTS and, and the whole community to understand. Yeah, great stuff. And if people want to find, uh, find out more, want to contact you, your presence is on LinkedIn, can they find you there? Very, very active on LinkedIn, yes. Excellent, great. He's, so. got, he's got talking points with a Z.com and yeah. Craig Durr on LinkedIn. Craig Durr, I'm also Dave possible Future, yeah. futurearmgroup.com as well too. Excellent, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. Thank you both, and we'll be in touch and we'll work that session out. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds forward, good. Looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Thank you.